we were surprised. Um, uh, a the, that uh, the householder uh, on whose house it was being painted was happy for that to happen. There hadn't been anything like it in Peterborough. Well, at least I'd never seen it before. In fact, I don't think I'd seen any murals like that anywhere apart from in Northern Ireland. This mural came about when Roger got in contact with me and asked me if I would be interested in doing a mural in this particular Gable End. And I came up with this proposal, which I think is was very simple, looking at it in hindsight, in a very complex social, economic, um, ethnically diverse area of the city, an old part of the city, which was extremely challenged in terms of its economy and what was happening there. And I felt very strongly I had to respond with something which, and I think public art is a positive um, image. Your engagement is to make the, the urban environment better. And the result was this particular idea, which was very simply to mirror the gable end and show a different kind of image, one which... Uh, in which a rainbow overspills this gable end into the street and this orchid start growing out of the, the pavement and the local kids come running to see what's happening. Unfortunately, Roger died um, whilst the, this was in pro- process. I don't remember when exactly. And it was decided then that the mural would be uh, named after him. The council asked me whether I'd like to have uh, something in the city dedicated to Roger. And I had the choice of either a cycleway or the mural. And um, seemed to me that the mural would be something that was a lot more visual and a lot more memorable. So um, I opted for the mural. We believed that art could have a tremendous impact on the regeneration of the area. The first time it was done, it was something that I'd never, you know, we in in the area had never seen anything like it before. Um, And it was uh, something, marvel is probably the word to use, we marveled. Um, Obviously, what one, one is, D- delighted that it's being um, renovated and uh, refurbished. So this mural um, uh, is a thing older than I am, um, which is a cool thing because it is one of the pieces of art that I would have seen uh, in the city when I was younger um, in conjunction with seeing graffiti and tagging, which was is kind of where I started my uh, creative career. I think at the time of seeing it uh, as, a, as a young person, you know, you've got, oh, okay, there's tagging, there's graffiti, but there's also this other thing, you know, um, and to see that it's kind of been uh, regarded and uh, kept in generally good repair. It's not been like defaced, you know, uh, over the years. Um, I think that sort of says a lot about community and how like valuable like street art um, murals and things like that can be. So for me personally, I think it's just kind of um, evidence that like it's worth having things like that in cities um, and that it can be inspiring uh, for people on many different levels. That was the first piece of street art I ever see. And and at the point I see it, I didn't know, um, didn't know, well, street art didn't exist really. You had art and you had graffiti. So, but I never played any conscious role in them, in them cultures. It was just like, oh, that's a nice piece of art. Where I am now, as as a professional street artist, I think subconsciously it's like it played a part as an inspiration into into where we are now. That I think that would be the first piece of art or first mural I ever publicly see would have been mid nineties. I think I would have seen it, maybe even earlier. But the first time I could sort of register actually it being there would have been yeah mid nineties. I think so, and then sort of forgot about it until this project come around and then see how sorry it had become in all them years of passing, so. 
So Peter Pazent's role in um, the restoration of the mural um, was as overall project managers, I suppose. So we'd been approached by um, members of the community, including Kit Hubbock and several others, because they were really interested in restoring the mural. Um, and we were already working in the Millfield area. Um, and we worked with them because uh, we were really interested in what they wanted to do to raise the funding with National Lottery Heritage Fund and other funders to make the restoration of the mural possible. It was quite a, an exciting moment, I think, when we heard that it was really going ahead because we'd had these conversations and we kind of thought, yeah, you know, quite, quite a lot of the time with these things, there's a really great, strong idea of something that needs to happen, but there isn't funding or anybody to organise it. Or so, you know, as soon as we knew Peterborough Presents were, were doing it, we're like, OK, it's actually going to happen. This is great. From a technical point of view, the project was really quite a challenge. Um, the mural itself, like we haven't just gone and painted that wall, like that whole wall has been uh, not just cleaned, but it's been um, uh, injected with a specific uh, type of uh, material so that the, the render that's on there is, so there's no point painting a mural that's going to, where the render is going to fall off the wall. So the whole thing's been um, surveyed and it's been inspected and there's a detailed brief and report on like what the condition of the wall is. You know, that's, they've spent like thousands uh, making sure that that substrate is safe. It's not coming off. It's not going to crumble or crack away. Um, and then there's been a fixative applied over the entire thing after it's been cleaned. Um, and so just all of that process by itself um, is is kind of a big deal. Um, you know, and, but one of the nice things was that when that was all that work was completed, we we thought um, the, the, the original condition of the, of the actual mural was there, there was no information on there. You couldn't, you could make a sense of what was there, but you really couldn't see anything. So we spent, um, well, I spent a number of hours like drawing reference from photos, making collages and rectifying them. And um, we had a specialist company produce rectified um, scale photographs. And we've montaged and overlaid all of the old photos that we've got and pulled them out to match up with all of that, produced a line drawing of the entire thing, which took hours to do. It turns out we didn't need because after they'd actually cleaned the wall, so much detail was still there. And some of the colours as well, so we had a bit to go on to help us work out how they had painted it. Especially as the layers were stripped back, you could see some of the brush strokes of the original work as well. That really helped us kind of work out how they layered this work up. In terms of, of getting the actual um, overall look though, the, I think the difficulty was getting the right set of imagery to begin with. That was where the really, you know, everything from that point on fell into place quite easily. But the sort of sticking point was like, well, how do we get the right sort mm. of level of photography to work from? The photographs, as much as they look clear, but when you actually come to actually putting in the detail, it's, the lines are blurred. So it's very hard to, to because you need really, really sharp photographs if you're going to do portraits and faces so that you can get those details in to make it look like the person. Um, what I found was that um, you sort of worked on it and um, you think, oh gosh, this is really difficult. And that's where the struggle and the responsibility comes in because you start thinking, oh my gosh, you, you need to get this right because there are people who actually would recognise some of these people. Suddenly, um, I had done most of all the faces or all the faces and then we got some more images that you could see the faces a little bit more clearly. <laughs> and then it was like, oh my gosh, do I, do I leave this like this? No, I couldn't. I went home that night and I found that I, I couldn't. I had to come back and really start work, reworking the faces again and at least try and get them as close as possible. They've made a really tight team um, and all drawn on each other's skills. I think it's been a really quite natural, organic way for them to work together um, and they've been very very respectful of where each other bringing each other's expertise in we always knew that it was going to be local artists that would mm. be the pool of artists that was something we were super set on partially because the mural was created by um local art students um with francis but also because it's such a sensitive and important and iconic figure within the city, I think it was really important that it was local artists.
The way how we worked here, I think it was really, really exciting, you know, to be able to work together, work really closely. Um, we're there each day and, you know, little banters, working out colours, working out paints and just and throwing ideas together as well. There were little things there that you had to make decisions on, like, for example, the, um, you know, some of the images were, were slightly different. So you could see where the image was changed, um, even when they originally drew them and then they're sort of repainted. So things like that, and then we're having to make decisions. So even working together like that was really, to me, it was really, really exciting. Absolutely brilliant, you know? People were stopped by, you know, periodically throughout the day, always saying lovely things, kind mm. of going, you're doing a lovely job and thanks, and, and, you know, chatting to us about people they knew from the mural or from the area and how things were at the time that it was done and how they remember seeing the artists and that sort of thing. So lots of really great conversations happening all through the day. There were other people who like coming along and say, oh, like, there's your dad, you know. So there's the, all these little kids who are, now re, who are now connecting newly to the mural. There was one particular guy who said, um, I was here when it was first done. And it's funny, I'm here again, you know. So it, it, that sort of connection, I think, is absolutely brilliant. Because it, it also makes you think that um, because it's such a precious thing, or at least the community is holding it so precious, that it will be looked after. Well, I, I grew up in this area. Uh, when I was a child. I only lived maybe about 100 metres from here. Um, I used to regularly go and play in Hobson's, which was just right, take a, even if you take a right from here. And my grandfather used to live on the other street over there. So I was always going past this corner while, as a kid. Uh, back in 1980, when I was uh, walking past, I see some massive scaffolding here. Uh, people started painting on the side of the wall. And I actually stood just there. You know, and I was just amazed at looking at the painting and I looked up and I noticed somebody in the back took a picture of me. Um, and actually they put me in twice. They've put me here and then they've put me one in the end as well. You know, this is our heritage. This is our pride for our community. Um, it just goes to show the history we've got here in, in Millfield. Um, also shows if you look at all the pictures on here as well, it just goes to show back in 1980s uh, how rich and diverse this community was uh, and to this day, you know, to this day still, it's still a rich and diverse community uh, and, and very proud to be part of this community. Beyond that, just sort of that human connection between uh, sort of a generational connection actually between those that were originally sort of participants and, uh, you know, actually featured on the wall, you know, now seeing, as you say, like that next generation Sort of reckon, oh, that's my dad, but he's the same age as me. you know. The, like that, that's fun. In it, just in and of itself, I think that there's meaning there. But I think for from another side of it is the fact that you know this this thing was a lot of money and effort to restore. You know, it's not a small thing at all. It's significant, um, and I think that that, that says uh, a, a huge range of things. You know, when you invest. In something and you you say that you know down even down to like the choice of materials that we used making our job significantly harder I'd like to say um, and, and actually taking longer costing more money because of the type of paint that we're using because this stuff is is part of the wall it's bonded to the wall right because it's a mineral paint but you're gonna get 20 years minimum it's gonna look this good you know 50 will still be here in 50 years time like we've like we've done this properly because because we're protecting not just the investment of what the artwork is, but we're actually protecting the investment of what that means in the community for like the next generation that comes along 50 years time, you know, when it's being restored again, maybe, or reinterpreted, who knows? So I think that kind of saying, um, you know, that culture has value, art has value, um, you know, the people in the community have value, and that's now being backed by money, right? You know, the, the, the people that, that, that are funding that, are saying this is important, you're worth something, this is worth something. I think that has a lot of meaning. Working with lots of artists was was wonderful. I loved it. Um, just the level of stuff you can learn. And it's difficult to could, to um, kind of organise that amount of people, but it was just a really, really great thing. You're learning something new every day and, you know, you kind of bouncing ideas off each other and um, just hanging out. Katie sort of came on a bit later in the project as a, a recommendation via Nate, didn't she? Yeah, she was, was like, amazing, yeah. 
oh my god I've met this girl Katie and she's <laughs> a prodigy really impressive um, and then he brought her in um, and she is amazing um, yeah she's incredible yeah I found it interesting working with the, the other artists also you know similar sort of experience with working with Stuart um, I think with Stuart because we probably we probably know each other more than I, I know the other artists you know so it was easy for us as well Easy with working with the other artists as well, because yeah, I know them as well, but they were all bringing different elements to the whole project, you know? And what was nice, there were different, there were days when I worked with all three artists and there were days when it was just myself and another artist. And so you have different kind of banter, right? Um, even talking about the colors and the paints in the different ways as well, because they're different ideas, you know? And even making decisions about which bit you, you were actually working on at that particular time. Finishing was like, a, it was a real surreal experience. I didn't expect it. Sort of like the sun, we had a bit of sun. It was a nice day. Um, I've collected, like, um, I've got a very broad music taste that I've collected in my lifetime from uh, heavy metal to classical. And, and so, yeah, I was, we had a playlist on and we were just going through loads of different emotions. And um, we, at one point we had some Cuban music on that was just randomly in my phone. And then Tony started talking about this, reminded of him his childhood. So that last day, I think through music, sunshine, we had, went on a bit of a journey that day. So it was, um, the last day was real special. So there, was, there was a sort of a lightning in the mood and then there was a, a quite, quite a kind of a, a, I don't know, kind of party feel to it. It was nice. And then finishing was... was yeah, really elated. I didn't expect it. It, it. it was like, yeah, it was a bit of uh, an overwhelming um, sort of end. I think it's also a bit like letting go of it um, because while you're working on it, it's almost like it's yours because you, 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 you've got that responsibility, you know, so you hold, you're, you're holding on to that and so all of that is on your head. It's a burden really to do that, you know. Um, and so then when you step back now, you're actually like letting go, letting go of it now, giving it to everyone now. This mural now had become, even in his totally faded form, had become some kind of integral part in the consciousness of this community. A public artwork belongs to the public at the end. It doesn't, you know, it doesn't belong to me anymore. Uh, you know, it never did. Um, and to me, it was interesting to see, and of course, as I've got older and times progress equally with the West Midlands, to see the impact this work has, especially on younger people, it's quite extraordinary. You don't expect that to, to be so. There is evidence that there are some people out actually beyond our district um, who, um, care, who care about my neighborhood and, and uh, want to put a smile on his face. Again, historically, that's not the kind of artwork that happens. It doesn't really have the identities of the communities that live within that area featured in it, um, but this does. And so I think it means, it means memories, it means stories, it means identity, um, and it really does, I think, mean community too. I hope that it does really um it's a kind of cliche, but that it gets itself on the map again and that um, it's something that Peterborians, or obviously particularly people who live around in the area, are really proud of. I really think that there's, if anywhere in the, in the city, I think there's a potential for that area to have some form of like um, a street art trail or I really think if, if there's anywhere in the city that could embrace art, I think that that's the area. And then maybe that will break down some of the barriers that people have. I think my hopes for Millfield, for that area, for any area, the city, any, anywhere, for the world, um, is that actually the, perhaps more understanding um, that, you know, we're not so different after all. And, you know, if we can see um, beauty in the side of a, of a building, on the side of a house, in your, in your local street, and that's something that we can all share, and participate in, then, then actually maybe, maybe there's other things we can share and participate in too. Thank <laughs> you.